Hey Arisers, what's arising? Welcome to another episode of Sound Vent. I am your girl Ari Harmony and I have a wonderful guest for you today. She is a little bit of everything. You know, we all have to wear hats. And we got well we have we all have to wear mini hats, so I'm gonna put it that way. She's a bartender, choir director, singer, and model. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Tay Soleil. Hey, hey y'all, hey everybody. Girl, how are you? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. How has everything been with you with oh, all this craziness going on, everything opening back up? It has been a trip. I tell you that for sure. It has been a trip around the world and back. Um, <laughs> You know, I, as many of us, I never expected to go through um, a pandemic. And for me personally, it was at one of my many primes. You know, at the time I was popping, doing my thing in New York, singing, modeling, doing shoots three, four times a week, hustling, flipping margaritas, making my money. And yes, I had just hit my, almost had hit my five year mark living in New York City. And so things were just lovely. And then no. here come COVID, here come Corona. Come crashing down. Yes. And so <laughs> it put a halt to everything so much oh. that I, all of my roommates moved out. I couldn't fill the rooms. We, I had to relocate. Um, I moved oh. to Florida, which is someplace I never, ever, ever seen myself at. But, you know, God works in mysterious <laughs> ways. So I'm here. And, yeah, I'm just trying to, like, Make a dollar out of 15 cent at this point. I, ooh, 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 that is something to say. <laughs> that is something to say right there. Make a dollar out of 15 cent. And just listening to you, how you just went over everything. Like you was, you was making your money bartending. You was doing fashion shoots and all. Like you was at your peak. And it just sounds so beautiful because I know that lifestyle. And I just, I miss it. I miss it myself. So let's go ahead and get into this topic, girl. Now, as we all know, I'm just going to say in our age range <laughs> and where we come from, uh -huh. the era that we come from of music, we are from literally the powerhouse yes. singers yes. of music. We, was, we, was, we came through that last wave of it. Mm -hmm. And so to listen to the music now, I'm just going to go on and say how do you feel about these whisper singers <laughs> now? Because and that's what I call them. I call them whisper singers because they are just and I'm not saying that they can't sing. So mm -hmm. I don't want to think I don't want anyone to think that I'm bashing them or you know the biting or anything like that. But they can't they can't sing. Like right. you know they. Can't. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's a couple of exceptions, but you know. It's, it's like a trend now. It's, it is a trend. I don't it, know. It's interesting, you know what I mean? Because, like, when you think about, like, the early 2000s and um, you had singers like Ashanti who would sing at some Ooh. times in, like, falsetto, but you, she could also belt at the same time, you know, that mm. was, a, it was... To me, I always thought it was a, a a technique that was nice to have, you know, to be able to just have that nice head voice that's clean like Maxwell or something like that. I thought yeah. it was a nice technique to have. I never thought of um, thought of that being someone's natural singing voice. And, and for me personally, you know, I've always wanted to be able to, like Mariah Carey, just hit them high notes and C's and all of that just like naturally and it's always been more difficult for me because I started off you know singing in the church as an alto and mm. um I definitely was envious of those singers but then once we got to I'm gonna use her and I am a fan but I'm gonna use her as example SZA who um a lot of her first work was like that airy head voice um yeah you yeah. know, and it sounded good. It was a vibe, but it also right. made me want to hear what is your full voice like. If you're using your full diaphragm, what does that sound like? Because it sound, you know, what I'm hearing now sounds lovely. It's, you know, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I want to, I want to feel it. You know what I mean? And and you're right. We we do come from. We were blessed. We come from an era of, you know, being able to hear the Aretha Franklins and and 
Angie Stones and Jill Scotts and just so oh. many deep voices and you know yes. ja even Jasmine Sullivan and so all yes. these different all these different Kiki White all these different like amazing yes. amazing vocalists and now the, the the bar is a little lower it's different the what people want to hear on records and, and radio play um, mm -hmm. it's you know boppy it's you know, songs right. are half the half the amount of time that they used to be. You don't find four minute, three, three, even three minute songs rarely anymore. It's all, right, it's all like two, two minutes, minutes, thirty seconds. And, like, and I'm like, that ain't enough for me. I'm used to like, change. you know, I'm a I'm an old school R and B lover. You know, I'm used to four or five minutes of just you know. eyes and just the emotions, <laughs> just the the runs and the riffs going on for days. And now oh, it's like. Yes. You know, you got the uh, what? Do you, how do you say her name? Um, Johnny Echo, who I think she has a beautiful voice, right? A beautiful right. voice, but she's one of the main ones. Yeah, but what else is in there? You know what I mean? Like, I want to hear what else you got. What else you got going on? I I feel lyrically what you're saying, but I want to feel it through my body. I want some chills. Right. And I, oh, that you just you just spoke so perfectly <laughs> just describing all of that and and I feel like you just spoke for how we feel like mm -hmm. our era like this is how we feel about this music today and just just how singers are carrying on and like you said yeah you hold a nice tone you have a lovely voice lyrically you're so um, everyone relates to you right. so well it is a vibe like you know it's a nice cruising in your car kind of mellow you know just sitting back in your room with a book and your tea you know kind of thing yeah but yeah you know like i i get it but it's like you said what else is there and and i'm a, i will always say her name wrong and i know if she knows this she's just gonna forever be mad at me but <laughs> it's jean aiko a janae aiko um Girl, I'm sorry, listen. But she has nice music. She does. And I and I feel even with uh Summer Walker and uh -huh. um uh Sneed and and who and who else? Um there is there's Alina Alina Barras. You know, yeah. just these and I'm right, like, these, I like the music, um Yeah. But I I could be honest, I would I'm I have never listened to any of the artists you just named. I've never listened to like a full project from them. You know, I'll hear their their radio hit or I'll see a music video. I'm like, all right, that's nice. I'll add it to the playlist, but it's not something that I'm I'm playing back and forth. Like I'm I'm feeling it. It's also not something that yeah. it makes me want to necessarily sing to or um, inspires me. And when um, uh, what's the, what's the one name you just said? Uh, um, Summer Walker. Summer Walker. Uh, Mm -hmm. When she, you know, first hit the scene and um, I think it was like last summer, she, I did enjoy her lyrically and I enjoyed mm -hmm. her, you know, the, the type of beast, the vibe that she gave. Yeah, me too. Um, but I never really considered myself a fan because that's just not... It's bent, girl. Sound bent. Bent it out. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just don't do nothing for me. It, it doesn't move yeah. me. And, and it, sometimes it makes me sad because it makes me feel like, wow, I must have really spent so many years kind of brainwashing mm -hmm. myself with the best vocalist, the best music. And that's yes. always been my, my goal is to sound like them, is to be able to project my voice in that way, is to be able to go as low as a baritone and, and, and still be mm -hmm. able to hit certain notes on the scale and so now it's a lot it's that's kind of yeah. also preventing me from in different ways putting out certain songs and all of that because i feel like people generations ahead of us would love it and then my generation yeah. of people will be like mm -hmm, you know and it's like mm, i just can't i can't relate you know yeah. musically i can't relate lyrically i think they're all good i think they're it's a nice wave of, of especially a female artist being a lot more open and honest and relatable yeah, in their music for sure but it's not something that i'm just like i feel that in my soul bro yes play that again and again <laughs> right and i've and i've listened to and i've heard some walker's entire project and like you said i love it's it's a, it's a wonderful vibe um and 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 i guess the thing is 
Because uh, would you agree that The Last of the Mohegans is pretty much like Jennifer Hudson and Fantasia? Yes. 100%. Right. Right. And so I and I kind of figured that and I and I think what it became is no, I don't have this big powerful voice, but I have a story to tell and I'm not going to be off key. And I think that's I think that's kind of like what it was. Like I'm not off key, so this is a nice sound. Like we always had easy listening music, but it's it's just that R&B was just this world of emotions and and power and your soul and you like you say you felt it in your spirit and you know it's it's music that made you cry and yes. just made you rem reminisce on moments that you remember when you heard this song what you were doing you know so and and I just feel like this music doesn't hold that it only holds what's current i love having this conversation with you because you are just speaking the truth and we are on the same page and we understand like you said there is a sort a sort of hurt there for us and i mean do you do you think that it will come back into mainstream at some point because don't get me wrong i know that there are people who are just like listen i don't want to listen to belting all the time but it wasn't like that it was it was different techniques that they can do because uh, jill scott she can belt but she she also has this smoothness to her voice like you know and she she and she could switch it up and i guess that what i guess that's what you would call someone who is actually talented who 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 has different methods and techniques of singing and i'm just not i'm not saying that these whisper singers are not talented but i mean you can just we can just say that they're not as talented period i mean i wonder will this come back to mainstream because one thing about it what goes around comes around and what this Gen Z is missing out now, I feel like if it did come back into mainstream, it would grab their heart the same way it did ours. And one of my favorite, favorite singers, um, I feel like she is both and that's her. I, I feel like she has both worlds. She's, she can, she's not a belter. She's not a, a, a Whitney or anything like that, but her voice is still powerful at the same time she is kind of one of those whisper singers she just it's just her voice is a little bit more in depth yeah and I, I feel like she rocks both of those worlds and she does it very well and you can tell that she really took the time to study her craft and to study her audience and to study her stories and to and to collect them in a way and arrange them in a way where they can touch people's heart and and reach people's souls so like you said i do I, I definitely see it as a numbers game that's really all it is and i also think that what we made popular because i i, I agree with Cardi B 100 percent on that as well that's what made the labels become lazy because they no longer really do artist development or yeah you know pay for you for pay for your uh vocal coaches or anything like like they do what they don't like you know it, it made them a little bit more lazy so i i kind of feel like we are holding on to jasmine sullivan <laughs> i'm holding on to her for like dear life we we are definitely holding on to jazz uh but i i do feel like it will come back around because i feel like that music will reach such a and i don't mean to say this in such a vulgar way but i feel like music will reach to such stu stupidity that it's going to have to come back i mean to be honest i think we, we're there you know what i mean i think really i, I do i think like there's a okay. it's, it's like a beauty it's like a beauty and an ugly thing it's beautiful that so many people have access to different platforms where they don't need to be signed where they can put mm -hmm. themselves out there self-promotion um yeah. but at the same time if you say you make one great song you know a summer bop it hits mm -hmm. boom but you don't know how to write music. You just got lucky with that one song. Right. And, and it just, it did numbers and it just started to travel the world, travel the internet. So now you have, there's an expectation from your fan base, from radios, from everybody. There's an expectation that not only do you create something just as good, 
um, but you continue to create. And that's when you start to get into the logistics of like your career. Are you building a career? What are you doing with your voice? What are you doing with your skill set? And I think that when I think of music, I won't say that generally for R&B. I do think that there are a lot of underground artists that do not get the exposure that they need. And if they did receive the exposure that they need, I think there are whole genre of R&B would be very different. But um, it, with music in general, and I'm speaking like our culture of music, hip hop, rap, even like drill, trap, all of those different things, I think that... It's drill, it, right? Oh and drill has, I mean, I never thought when drill first started coming out, which was early, to, what I know to be real drill music, early 2000s, like, I it, know I, it, it, I, I didn't think you could, it could change. I just thought it was what it was, you know what I mean? And now it's changed into like the punk, punk drill. It's just so many different sub, yeah. sub genres of music now. And I think that we have hit a very low low and yes um i don't i don't know if we can get any lower i think it'll just be like an over filtration of like poorly made music untrained vocalists um Mm. you know bad songwriters you know and i think and it's just it's it's crazy to me it blows my mind especially when you work in new york and you sing in new york and you see all the different people who busk and they, I mean, incredible, mm. incredible <laughs> artists, incredible singers. And it's like, why am I not seeing you in a music video? Why am I not hearing yeah. your music on, on, on Apple or on Spotify or whatever the case may be? And right. it's because one element of them, one element of their being isn't sellable. You mm. know what I mean? It's not marketable to right. the mainstream people. And to me, that's not that's not what should matter. And it's like the what we have to choose from to listen to gets smaller and smaller and smaller each year. The the yes. amount of like good artists it gets smaller and smaller and it like breaks my heart because I'm like, it's 2021 and I'm still listening to stuff from the nineties and the- Me too. <laughs> Me too. And I like know, it just came out. Yes, and I'm <laughs> having these conversations with people, you know, because I I consider myself to be musically inclined at least as far as like I will listen. I may not like it, but I'll listen to different genres of music and, and create my own opinion of it. But when I have these conversations with people my own age, you know, it's like dang, like yeah. am I missing something? Y'all know all yeah. these different artists and all these different people, and I'm like I ain't heard them because. They don't sound like nothing to me, to me, and that's just my opinion. And you know, you work with God. You can only work with God give you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can only work with God give you and build from that. I just like you said. I don't think there is enough uh, artist development going on anymore, Mm -hmm. and and people just don't put in the hard work because they don't have to. Yeah. Um. Oh my gosh, this is so much to say. Oh my goodness. I just love this conversation. I, I adore this. I cherish this. And and there is something missing at the end of the day. And I just hope that it will come back. So for, for our last thing, because we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. And I just hate to wrap it up because I am just so in love with the dialogue here. When, when you look at hip hop or rap in a decline or going down or in a nice, nice way to put it, going in a different direction. <laughs> And usually I ask people, when do you think that started? And you and can you guess an artist that they would tell me? Who? Soldier Boy. <gasps> I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. That was the first name that popped in my head too. And I love Soldier Boy. <laughs> I grew up on that and so um, yeah. it hurts my own feelings to say that um, I know I know I know like, when I he, love Soulja Boy and he, he really did he really did like start the whole internet wave in my yeah. opinion for our generation um, but I think that after that after he set that that tone there were so many kids that were trying to replicate that and, yeah. and and then and it just broke off in so many different ways. You know what and I mean? He, yeah. 
And I think he, that. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I think that if Soldier Boy would have evolved, then those kids would have evolved. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he made so much money and he made such an impact on hip hop. He and he, he did what a lot of artists before him did, which is like dance music which is like i'm gonna i'm gonna make up a little eight a eight count yeah. dance step Snap and music. i'm gonna have everybody in the world doing it and he did i have he everybody did. in the world he, doing it and like it just stuck it stuck. he was he was marketed so well yes he was, he was marketed everywhere. so well he was everywhere. across country <laughs> yes overseas so with, so with that being said so because this is where i was going to get to if Soulja Boy was that point of mm -hmm. hip hop and rap, who do you think was in singing? Ooh. Oh man. Ah. Uh, that is that. Ooh. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so uh, I don't. I, don't I can know. already just. I can already guess a name that you're gonna say between one of the two. But go ahead. I don't no, I gotta hear what you gonna say first. No, because no, I'm not gonna... I said Soldier Boy. <laughs> so you gotta go. <laughs> okay. You gotta go on this one. Okay, so we had that era of like Brandy, Monica, you know, then you had the girl groups S S W V in Vogue, mm -hmm. then and Destiny Child, then you had the artists who started to decide to go solo from their groups. Um, Beyonce yeah. who is who in my opinion is the queen and I do think that she did it evolve um, mm -hmm. in her she own did. time and in her own way, and I, I respected that so much. But and I think it's it's incredibly hard to stay relevant when like the whole world has changed. Like you know how you say everything under the sun, it comes back around. But like yeah. this whole internet media stuff is it's not going nowhere. It yeah, is no. gonna stay. So now this is just like the the playground that we have to deal with. But hmm. There's always been like crossover singers though. You know what I mean? Like Jennifer Lopez. Um, but that's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole yeah. Nother conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say Okay. I would say between Ashanti and Rihanna. No. <gasps> Listen, I love Rihanna and I respect Ashanti so much. But I feel like with Ashanti they held her back because oh, yes. I really heard her sing, yes. like sing. I heard her, but this was years later, though. Yes. After the height of her career, that she, that I, that she really gave her diaphragm, gave her full voice. Yeah. So I feel like when she was in her in her height, it was it was popular. It was a thing, and I think that, and I think it's really a, only a year difference between her and Rihanna. Because honestly, everyone who I was around, yeah, they like Rihanna. She was beautiful. She was gorgeous. But everyone said that she's not really a singer. So she evolved as well. And she made her voice work for her to the point where we love it because she owns it. You know what? I have to agree 100%. Now, with Ashanti, now I'm, I am a diehard Ashanti fan. Wow. So yeah, I'm a diehard Ashanti fan, and it's because of the same reason that you said she can sing, and she could mm -hmm. always sing. And I think I feel like you know, with labels being signed to the same label, you know, with like Ja Rule, and and mm -hmm. and a lot of her music being stolen from her and given to artists who had lighter skin and different features and what. And I don't get me wrong, I love me some J Lo too. But at the end of the day, when it comes to vocalists and talent. Yes, yeah. you're stealing the talent and you're putting it, putting, giving it to someone else so that they can mm -hmm. continue to grow and and go on and so forth with their career. And I do think that in in a lot of different ways, Ashanti was kind of blackballed. But um, yeah. as Ashanti done did Broadway shows, I mean, she's a, she's a true vocalist. She did. Now, Rihanna, you definitely hit the nail on the head with that. And I do love me some Riri too. But, I, I love her too. Um, come on now, like. <laughs> I think that she had great 
songwriters and I think that she was mm -hmm. very blessed to come under Jay Z who had all the connections that he needed to create mm -hmm. her into an artist who can not only be on the R and B charts but cross over into the pop charts, which is where the real money was always at. Right. And right. um I do I think that she, you know, image image wise perfect i think she's a beautiful girl i think she's talented i think she's like a fashionista i love yeah. Fenty, oh. all of all that, that but for her to have went as far as she did with the voice that she has and i'm the type of artist where i'm the type of person where fan where i like to go back and i like to listen to like live shows um acoustic versions raw um vocals and if you listen to her raw vocals compared to like Beyonce's raw vocals with the track, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Very different sounds. Very I mean, different. People have even said that about like Mariah Carey. Everybody knows in studio versus live, it's going to sound differently. Um, but yep. technique wise, riffs and runs, and there's only like one song that of Rihanna's where I was like, all right, she might just sing a little something. And that was Russian Roulette, and that was 10 years ago. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, wow. And okay, if, yeah. you, if you've never heard Rush Mula, it's a good one. You know, listen to it. And um, and I heard that. I was like a senior in high school, and one of my friends did it for our talent show. And I was like, that's mm. Rihanna? I thought all she did was sing about umbrellas and stuff. But <laughs> but, but I do, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person where, because I'm a hustler, so when I see a, a woman who who can come from the islands and yeah. figure out the game and hustle and like, you know what, I'ma use, I'ma fake it till I make it, I'ma walk out on family, hmm. do what I gotta do. I respect that. And she did her thing. She definitely did her thing, but you're right. She definitely was a changing point in there because then after that you had um what's that girl? Oh, uh, she could sing though. Uh, she's I think she's Spanish. Uh Ariana Grande. That's her name. Oh yeah, she can blow. She can blow. You know what I'm saying? That's like a young Mariah Carey right there with the yeah. Her thing that. was, her thing was she wasn't really enunciating her words, and he was like, "What the heck are you saying? You sound great." What that is talk? true. <laughs> that is very true. Or even like, and she kind of reminds me of a young Christina Aguilera, whom mm. I was always a fan of Christina Aguilera until 100%. until I started to learn what vocal control was. Mm -hmm. And um, not that she can't sing, she can definitely sing, but I think that she would have been one of the greatest, like one of the greatest in the world if oh. she would have had the right development. Mm. And so I, I think something. it all comes back down to that. But now, now that the world is the way it is and, you know, you just got to make a little two minute, 15 second bop and, you know, have some <laughs> girls all relating to it. That's all you got to do. To get on, and you know. maybe it won't. Maybe music will never come back. I don't know, girl. I don't know. If, if anything, I would say that I feel like, and this is bad to say, I feel like that it can go one level lower before we really hit rock bottom. Before things start to try to come back around, and and I, and I, I just feel that you know I feel like, and the reason I feel like that is because we do have our little specks of hope now. Mm -hmm. And we do have good vibing music. So I, I do feel like we haven't reached the the lowest of the token pole here. But I do hope it comes back around. You guys, this has been a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful, endearing conversation <laughs> with Tay Soleil. Thank you so much for coming on Style Vent. Thank you for having I, me. Of course, of course. Listen, you guys, we're going to have to have her back on here because as you can see, Tay knows what to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just made it up. <laughs> guys, please make sure you go in the description box below. Find her social media. It is there. Look her up. Follow her. Make sure you follow her journey because Tay does her thing. She's a, she's beautiful inside and out. And I cannot say that enough. So with thank that being you. said, <laughs> thank you. With that being said, stay up, stay blessed, and stay rising. Peace.